Hey boss, welcome to the Blogger Breakthrough Podcast. I'm your host, Liz Stapleton from elizabethstapleton.com and founder of the Blogger Breakthrough Summit. Remember, if you want to make sure you're the first to hear about registration opening for the 2021 Summit, be sure to join the Summit's newsletter, bloggerbreakthrough.com forward slash newsletter. Today, I'm sharing another snippet from one of our 2020 Summit sessions. It was one of the most popular sessions of the Summit. Today, we're going to be learning from WordPress guru, Grayson Bell. So let's go ahead and dive in. So besides like not backing up and stuff, you know, what are some of the issues you see come up the most or the biggest mistakes people make that you have to fix or help them with? Uh, so, uh, I'll go with the elephant in the room that everybody's talking about right now, site speed. Uh, everyone, everyone is wanting to kill some site speed, right? You know, like everyone's like, gotta have a fast site, gotta have a fast site. And, and yes, that's very important. But, um, <laughs> so there are, there are several things in site speed that you should not be doing. Um, and a lot of these themes out there have them on there and, and, you know, it looks pretty and everyone's so excited about it, but don't put sliders on your site. Sliders are terrible for site speed. And, and to be honest, I think there was a study uh, like several years ago that's nobody interacts after the first slide. Yeah. Like people just scroll. Like no yeah. one sits there and, and watching a slider and going, oh, this is nice. Like people don't really yeah. do that anymore. And the yeah. impact sliders have compared to the, what people see, you know, like just take it off. Yeah. Just take the slider off. Get rid of it. It'll be better. Um, you don't need it. Another thing are um, my favorite Instagram widgets. Yeah. Everybody loves to put a good Instagram widget on their site. Uh-huh. Here's two reasons why I don't like that. One, all those images have to load when the page loads because you're loading them off of Instagram's CDN. You're not, uh, you're not loading them from your own site. Yeah. So you can't control how Instagram runs their cache and all that other kind of stuff. You have to yeah. pull those images and sometimes – it doesn't show the thumbnails. It shows the full size image. So each image, and usually people put like eight across or yeah. maybe like four or five. Whatever, yeah. Each image might be like 800 pixels wide. Yeah. So you're like trying to load all these images and you're like, why is my site so slow? Instagram widgets. And here's another thing. You don't want to take people off your site. Like unless you specifically want to grow Instagram, don't use it. To pivot, you know, like you don't want people moving away from your site unless there's you want an, to use Instagram I, to get people to your site. Not yeah, other. people typically go the other direction. Yeah. The only reason why you want people to leave your site is through affiliate links, mm-hmm. email uh, landing page, newsletter, something like that. And typically, you don't want to lose yeah. your lose your site or or um, maybe an external link that you put on for an advertiser or something like that. You don't want people to leave your site. You want them to get the information and maybe hit up a couple of affiliate links along the way, yeah. or maybe they'll click on an ad, but really don't, people don't do that anymore either. Yeah. Um, it's an accident. Yeah. The other, the other things, um, really bad, uh, the Pinterest board widgets. Um, we see those a lot. So you can go on Pinterest and you can say like, I think there's a section in there that you can create widget. Oh yeah. 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 So, um, the big problem with those is that a lot of times we see the same one with the Twitter ones. So we see, that when you're, you have to scroll through them, mm-hmm. it's got a, like a vertical scroll bar just on the widget and there are like 90 images. Well, 90 of those images have to load during the page load. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> like, I actually have never made that mistake. I've made most of them, but that <laughs> one I haven't done. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a real bad one. Um, so we typically tell people, here's a little trick that I'll tell people. If you really want uh, those widgets on your site, yeah. here's what you do is you put them on your site. And then you take a screenshot of the widget and make it an image. Okay. So it doesn't really change, but people don't know that. Yeah. Right? Like people that are just new to your site don't know that. So, when they, so then you put it down as just an image and not an actual, like the widget. And then you just link it to your profile. You link it to your Pinterest profile or your Facebook profile or your Instagram. Yeah. So that's so really, instead of loading all these uh, scripts and all this JavaScript and all this stuff, uh, for these widgets and all the images, you're just loading one image from your own site. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you really have to have these, but most of the time, once I show people like the site speed differences from just taking those few items off, they're like, Oh wow. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that's a big one. I'll say the other, um, this isn't really, well, it could be related to site speed, but images don't take images from your phone and put it on your website. <laughs> like when we take a snapshot with an iPhone or an Android, you're, you're talking like four to 12 megabytes in, in file size. These are big images. These are, these could be like 3,500 pixels wide by 
you know, whatever the orientation is. And they're generally, uh, a lot of people just like to load those right up into WordPress and just keep on going. That's not a good idea. Um, the reason is, is that your site now has to load these bad boys. <laughs> And a lot, if you've ever gone to a site and uh, you're, you're sitting there watching and you're seeing like the image slowly load, it's because it's huge. <laughs> it's just massive. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to, you want to put it in a, in some program. Some people use Photoshop. There's a, there's a free one that's like Photoshop. It's called GIMP. Um, I use PicMonkey. Some people use Canva. It doesn't matter. Resize these bad boys down. And get them to a, a size that, that makes sense for you. Some people, if you want portrait, you know, make a size that works for you. If you want landscape, make that size. Mm -hmm. um, and then I typically run mine through a short pixel yep. to compress. So a lot of times you can get an image that, you know, even if resize might be 500 kilobytes in size. And you want to try to aim for 150 or less, 150 kilobytes or less, uh, 100 and less if you can get it. Because here's the caveat. Every page that you have on your site, you want to have it to be less than two megabytes in, in full size. That's every element loading on the page. And if you want to know a tool to check that, you can go to tools.pingdom, P-I-N-G-D-O-M.com, tools.pingdom.com. It'll give you a load time. That load time is mostly BS, <laughs> but it'll give you uh, the full page size. Okay. So... This is really good uh, to check some of your popular posts. It's really good to check uh, your homepage and where people are kind of going. Yeah. So uh, run that through. You want to be two megabytes or less. The smaller it is, the better. Because here's the deal. Everyone's going on mobile these days. Mm -hmm. We're mobile friendly. We're mobile first. Uh, there are only a couple of sites that I've ever been across that really had more desktop users than they had mobile. So you're talking about someone on a mobile network trying to load... 10, 12, I've, I've seen up to 60 megabyte pages. 60, I was blown away when I saw the 60 megabyte page. I was like, well, no wonder why it's slow. Uh, um, I'm like, what are all mine? <laughs> yeah, so like you, you like, oh, you would know if it was 60 megabytes. You'd be sitting there no, like, I know, I can't but... anything on here. <laughs> and so um, the smaller it is, the faster it's going to load. So you want to try to get everything below two megabytes. A lot of people aim for one and less. Uh, that can get really hard, especially for recipe bloggers. I know there's a lot of them out there. It can be really hard when you have um, high, high quality Pinterest images. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know? So that can be a little bit difficult, but just never upload them from your phone or upload them from a, a stock photography site like uh, Deposit Photos. Don't, don't just take it and just throw it up there. It's going to be the worst experience you can ever have <laughs> because you'll have to go fix all of them later down the roads. So. Right, on that note, I hope you learned a lot about some things you should avoid doing on your website and how to fix them. Um, join me next time when I'm going to be sharing yet another sweet snippet from our, one of our 2020 sessions. I'll catch you then.